The Surfing Violinist presents Remembering Snake, Surf Log 33. One of our most well-known local legend surfers and skaters, Stephen Pearson, also known as Snake, passed away, so in September we did the surf ritual paddle out in his honor. Special thanks to Wes Rowland for the drone footage. Tuesday, 1977, it was called Big Tuesday behind the Baird Hilton, AKA Rivermouth, West End Boys. Probably a foot or two overhead. Unbelievable, left, right. Chilala, Snake. Thanks, David. I love you. Thank you for all the great time you've given us. And um, you're in our hearts and you're in our soul forever. Forever and ever we'll see you again. And uh, much love to my brother, Stephen. He taught me so much in the time I knew him from just like actual lesson, like life lessons. Stuff that I'll carry on forever. There's so many things I remember, like little things that he didn't feel like, it was nothing for him to say, but for me it was like, it's like some genius statement, you know? Shit, Steve, I already miss you. Thanks for all the years, and thanks for the anchor of this whole entire property here. Love you, and hope we can keep it going and rock it the way you want it to rock. Thank you, brother, love you very much. What do you know? What does it say? Lee! Hurricane Lee. Stop it at Lee. Justin Buxton and I were feeling really surf starved, so we decided it was time for a surf trip. Oh yeah! Hurricane Lee promised to kick up an epic swell. Everybody was talking it up. We wanted to go further south, but due to time constraints with work and gigs, we settled on a straight shoot east to Jacksonville, arriving Tuesday, September 12th, with the hope of catching the best waves of the swell on Wednesday and Thursday. Not everything went according to plan. Yeah, it's like bed bugs over there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you know. Looks like a fun little wave. Depending on how the waves were, we were going to come back on Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. We did Hannah Park and surfed Dolphin Plaza for the most part. The sets were slow, but I decided to wait for one and was able to snag an outsider, and the rules of positioning were honored, thank you gentlemen. It was really a pleasure to surf a slopey wave that still had push. Having the GoPro mouth mount allowed me to get footage of some locals and other tourists. Here's Caleb Randall of Randall Productions making a split second decision for a late takeoff and making it. On day two, I got a couple shots of Jake Whitaker on some fun ones. And on day two, I got a clip of Constantine finding an outsider on his log. And Harry with a tidy turn in the afternoon. The real surprise was bumping into Lindsman Chance Wallace from Pensacola and finding myself in position to snag some footage of him. Justin started out on his fun shape on day one, which allowed him to get position on me a time or two. Then he moved on to shorter boards. He was expressing some frustration on his pop-up and foot position, but was stringing together nice rides on both days. Stoked to see him on a short board. You don't like my wax job? You don't think this is a professional, does it? What are you talking about? <laughs> you got enough on there. It doesn't feel super sticky to me.
As for me, I was finding waves here and there both days. I favored rights, of course. But in addition to my ungainly wrist akimbo kook stance, I did notice the double fist pump symptom cropping up. Here's a couple from day two. Probably my favorite single maneuver from both days was this little white water bash into an oncoming section. Felt good. Did my first flyaway kook flail in quite some time, so it was definitely time to get back in the lab and work on better form and body positioning so I can begin making the transition from flyaway kickouts to actual airs. And for that training, I looked to skateboarding. Of course, most of the time I'm spending in the pool bowl, which has been going well, but I'm pretty much a broken record doing the same two lines over and over. It just feels good, especially when the surf is flat. One day I bumped into fellow surfer and skater Miles at the skate park, who also happens to be an accomplished drone shooter. He got some footage of one of my broken record lines in the pool, and local ripper John Walsh on his lunch break. On one of the last clips, Miles filmed a super high overhead shot of the park, and after he shared the footage with me, I noticed he captured one of the few times when I landed a decent length launch alongside the manual pad. And when I looked back at it, I realized I probably had the distance and pop to make it on the mani pad itself. I was stoked, but I was still hesitant. On the same day we did the paddle out for Snake, I met up with Tate and Ken at the skate park for a night session. Chris Upton happened to be in town, so we got to catch up and show him the new park, and he helped me get my front side slash grinds back in one of the small bowls. There was a dude skating around I didn't immediately recognize until I got over to the street section, and upon a closer look it was confirmed. Waylon Gross. Waylon was in a movie called No Matter What that premiered at South by Southwest Film Festival back in 2011, in which I played a small supporting role. We hung out on set a bit, and I filmed the boys skating in Austin in between showings of the film. Quite a few of our antics were uploaded to this very YouTube channel way back then. I haven't seen him in probably 12 years, I'm guessing. Right before I had a chance to reintroduce myself, he broke his board, so he wasn't in the best of moods but he couldn't believe the old man was back into skating, and after he got his backup board set up, he joined me in the pool for a run. In exchange, I told him I'd join him on the street. It's about to go down. And see if he could help me clear the Euro gap, one of my hurdles. Even after the footage from Miles, I was just positive it wasn't going to happen that night. I was focused on the Euro gap, and I had no designs to try to get up on the mani pad. But then, Waylon gave me some good pointers. Bro, I've been putting that off for 25, 20 years, man. <laughs> Thanks, Waylon, for the push. It felt great seeing you again, dude, and I'm honored you got me to jump two more hurdles in one night. You're a man, Ford. Good to see you, buddy. Keep shredding. All four of them down. Bolts, baby. Started skimming in September with Justin Buxton and his son, Finn, a little Dawn Patrol at Treasure Island Condo. And Justin got the spray of the morning. Oh, taste the rainbow. Newly minted pro, uh, Dylan Duncan came back a few days later, had a reunion session with some of his buddies at County Pier. They were even cheering me on, the old dude trying to keep up with the young tykes. Uh, seeing them skim was really good, especially Dylan. I mean, when he gets into his own, he's just, it's hard to beat. He was launching airs left and right, and he's just so stoked. So, inspired by that, I started doing some uh, shove it uh, practice. I've, I've just got so, so long way to go. I can't even land them still. Uh, and then you'll see how great I'm doing uh, when I'm actually on the water. One day I decided to do a little exploratory expedition down to deep water point, searching for the novelty wave. And look, I mean, even the pontoons will kick up a novelty wave, but the main attraction was to get the attention of the sea screamer which i did and both of the sea screamers sent me awake so this is my first attempt at deep water point to skim into sea screamer wake and the wake did not disappoint look at the size of this thing uh but i just have nowhere near enough speed and this thing clocked me right in the face uh the second sea screamer i was i was trying to be so deep so i tried to swing further out and i i didn't even make the sh I just overshot it. So first time was too deep, second time was too wide. Uh, and then it was cool because Franny, she had footage from the second boat, so she saw my wipeout and then my fail. 
So uh, it's it's pretty fun, but I need to if I'm going to try to give these people something to watch I need to get a monkey crawl or something to preserve my speed to actually get to the thing So I've been started practicing monkey crawl dry drops and then wet drops as you can see though. I'm I, I Don't really know how to keep the speed once I'm running. I've slowed down right when I get on the board and uh I'm, I'm, I'm dragging. I'm just pushing water in front of me. I'm not even skimming. I just fall a lot. I found this nice little uh, sandbar by City Pier on the east side that was working on low tide on certain days. But uh, I finally got a couple where I went further than I was going the normal way of dropping for me. So anyway, this is my attempt to practice so that I can get to that barrel. Look at that thing. A little chomper. I got to get to that thing. Then I had a session on the end of the month on the September 30th with Roman Shirley and he tried to demonstrate to me his no step drop uh, Just a really quick uh, Board throw and then getting on the board. I'm I'm not doing good man. I, I just can't keep up with these these young and he's not even young anymore. He's still in great shape um, And I am trying to do backside airs, so he was trying to help me out with that a little bit uh, not making too much progress, but the goal looms ahead. I must get to the Sea Screamer Super Chomper Wake. Until next time, keep it consistent, even if the surf isn't. Oh, to see these videos early without ads, join the lineup here on YouTube. You just need a YouTube account, and for $1.99 a month, you click this little join button and sign up to get early and ad free access to four monthly vlogs the surf vlog, the masala vlog, the violin vlog, and the family vlog. Thank you very much.